roads, trains, and the locomotive have a long history in America. In the early days, smaller locomotives ran on steam, but have since been replaced by larger diesel and electric-powered engines. In fact, the locomotive continues to grow and evolve, which is exactly why I'm here today in Erie, Pennsylvania. I'm just outside the General Electric Transportation Plant, and I'm gonna take you inside and show you how their Evolution locomotive is on the cutting edge as it's assembled in just three mind-blowing days. The locomotives are assembled in seven different buildings. They're huge machines, and so are the tools that they use to build them. Pete? I'm Matt, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is uh, Pete. He's the product manager for the Evolution Series locomotive, right? Yes, sir. And which is what is right behind us. That's what you're looking at, one of the units that's going to be heading out to BNSF shortly. So tell me about the Evolution Series locomotive. Is this the best we've seen since they started? Well, it's hard to say. Um, it's certainly the best we've seen from an emissions and a fuel efficiency uh, perspective, which are uh, two critical elements for the railroads. It's 3% uh, more fuel efficient than its predecessor model, um, while reducing emissions by over 40%, which is significant when uh, one of these guys will burn uh, about 350,000 gallons a year. That's a lot of fuel. That's a lot of fuel. How important are railroads to us as humans, so, you know, our American culture? Uh, critical. Railroads uh, move nearly 45% of all inner city freight in the U.S., so uh, without having the railroads to move that freight around, uh, the economy would uh, basically come to a halt. So can I get the manager's approval to take my boys inside and check it out? You sure can. Thanks for your time, sir. No problem. Appreciate it. I'm standing next to what is the beginning process of Station 1. You're looking at an empty platform. Now, instead of having the workers go underneath it and put all the wires from up there, they're going to take a crane and pick up the 50-ton platform, put it in an inverted position, also known as upside down, take it all the way down the assembly line, drop it back down so the workers can install the pipes and everything from up top. Don't get your fingers in there. Gotcha. Done. That noise can only mean one thing, they're ready to flip it. The cables are actually connected to the platform in three places. A cable on each side flips the platform, and another cable, also on the side, bears all the weight while it's being rotated. So right now it's on its side, so what are you going to do? Are you going to unhook this, this? Yeah, unhook this, hook up the other side. Oh, yeah. How far does it have to go to get to the beginning of the assembly line to start the process? Probably 100 yards. I don't know. There are 13 locomotives in various stages of assembly in this building at any given time. So as you're taking the platform, I mean, you're going over locomotives, other locomotives, and other workers. Right. So what, do you have to clear them out of the way? Or? Yeah, we have to walk ahead and yell, get out of the way. Set the sirens going, too. Yeah. So can I start telling people to back off? Yeah. I used to be a bouncer. This is what I do best. Come on. 50 tons coming through. Deck coming over. Deck coming over. Get out of the way. Coming over. Watch your lips. We got 50 tons coming. Run, get out of the way. It's coming. Run. 50 tons is coming. Get out of the way. Stay calm! Stay calm! Get out of the way! It took about two and a half minutes to move the platform 100 yards. But once it was in place, Bob and I were done fooling around, and it was time to get down to business. In Station 1, below platform equipment is installed, including piping and wiring to operate the traction inverters and the braking system. Tom is responsible for the assembly process in this building. We're going to Station 2. All right, you saw Station 1. Station 2, we don't really assemble a locomotive. That's where we put the engine and alternator assembly together, okay. put the muffler on, do a couple of hose connections, and get the engine ready to set onto the deck in Station 3. How much does that thing weigh? The engine weighs about 48,000 pounds. Right. It's a 12-cylinder engine that produces 4,400 horsepower. 
previous technology was a 16-cylinder engine, so we reduced the cylinders. It's about the same size, but we get a little bit more uh, horsepower out of fewer cylinders, and it's it's more environmentally friendly. How fast does you know that get the locomotive? I think they say the maximum speed on a freight locomotive is 75 miles an hour. So from station two, you take the engines, and then what? You you assemble it on station three? It goes on to the deck in station three. Before the engine is installed in station three, the main cab, the auxiliary cab, and radiator cabs are lowered onto the platform. So you've taken me, we're on top of a locomotive right we're now. We're on top of a locomotive in station three. Okay. It has a couple of cabs on. It has a main cab, an auxiliary cab, and a radiator cab. And I'm going to take a guess, but this big hole right here, is that where the engine and the engine cab's going to go? Yeah. After the engine and traction alternator are lowered into place and bolted down, the engine cab is lowered and secured. Once the engine's in here, there can't be much room to finagle hoses and not stuff. A, is not it? a lot of room. So how do they do see, that? See, if you showed up to work, you'd be a pipe fitter, because we all get all the big guys <laughs> that they can reach up high, and right. they can get to all that stuff. So I wouldn't be a welder? Probably not a welder. you got to squeeze into those small, tight places. So what are you trying to say, Tom? I mean... Maybe you could weld the main cap. All right. <laughs> I understand. At this point, the locomotive is almost finished, and it's being moved farther down the line to Station 4, all 386,000 pounds. At Station 4, it's lowered onto the wheels. Final hookups are made. And there it is, baby. We have a completed locomotive ready for a new paint job. How long does it take from a raw platform to right here, Station 4? If everything's going well, it should be, it should be at this point in three days, three eight-hour shifts a day. I need to get inside of one of these things and see how it rides. Where do I need to go? We'll take you up to the test track and let you take, uh, take a spin down the track. Let's go. All right. Coming up, I try to stop a powerful locomotive before it gets to the end of the test track. And later, that looks like a half a...